I think in Europe, actually, we have uh, many great uh, places who work on language technology, both in the academia and, and as well uh, as, as in the industry. Uh, on the other hand, what we can see is that most of the applications that people know and use every day are actually coming from overseas, and we all know Google Translate and we know other tools, um, which I think is actually not very justified because of the great uh, resources and teams we have in Europe. Well, I think the, the biggest contribution was to bring uh, the people together who worked on various uh, types of language technologies, specifically in machine translation, but also in the other uh, necessary technologies. Uh, it, uh, con its contribution was to uh, establish uh, the, the MetaShare uh, repository and the movement to open data for linguistic research and as well as for industrial use. So I think the contributions were mostly in the, in the networking area. Uh, there was some good research done as well. And now uh, I believe that everyone in Europe in the language industry and technology knows what uh, MetaNet is. Well, I, I definitely see Czech technology to be, to be improving. Uh, we have been working on it together with other groups in the Czech Republic for many, many years now. Uh, we have developed, uh, developed lots of uh, good resources and, and technologies, but I agree that the challenge of the Slavic languages is, uh, is specific in, the, in this area. But more importantly, even each of the Slavic languages has its own uh, peculiarities which have to be solved. For example, uh, for Czech, this is in the area of spoken language, where almost everyone in the Czech Republic actually talks differently than the standard language which you can see in print. So if you develop technology for uh, written language, uh, you are still not done when you really want to analyze in depth uh, what people actually speak. And this is very important today because we want to go into the area of uh, non-standard speech like uh, social media, uh, com communications of all kinds, uh, robot control and everyday tasks like this. Well, definitely the biggest challenge of LT is language understanding. Because even today, uh, when we have uh, pretty good systems on, uh, for machine translation and other, uh, other areas which are based on big data and large language resources, uh, they can only solve the problem for particular applications. But uh, looking at a more distant future, when we really want to have intelligent uh, uh, processing of language, when we really need language understanding, we need a lot of research to, to do to be able to achieve this in the future. Predictions are always difficult to do. I mean, uh, people always predicted that in five years we will have a perfect machine translation and they were doing this for 50 years. Uh, but I think in, in 2020, we will definitely see many more industrial applications of language technology. Again, it's hard to predict which ones exactly. Um, we have seen spelling checkers for 10 or 15 years. Maybe in the seven years from now, we will see uh, you know, much better translation than we have today. Uh, we will see specific uh, dialogue systems and, and, and human computer uh, you know, communication systems. Uh, but I don't think we will see a really under, you know, systems that will really understand language and will be able to do knowledge-based inferencing. That's something which will probably go beyond 2020 and we have to join forces to do research in this area. I think it's impacting it in two ways. One is that uh, the big data, which are language-oriented, will allow us to use very new algorithms uh, which borderline with uh, uh, biology, medicine and other areas of research. I mean, statistical algorithms, which will be able to learn from this big data for the purpose of developing new and better language technologies. But also, it will influence the language uh, research uh, by the need of combining the structured big data, you know, the data which are coming from physicists and government agencies and methodology and everywhere else, and combine them with the textual resources which we have. And that's a new challenge as well, how to derive knowledge from both texts and the databases and combine it together and, uh, and do new applications in that area.